vacant houses. So they'll come in and tell her and say, well, you know, we're giving you the finances to buy out this stuff and start this little black business. You see what I'm saying? So when you ask, what happened to all these people? They say, oh, the Vine City Housing Ministry is the one, that's the black church is the one that bought up all this land. So they're using the black churches just like they use the black churches to put us in the census, in the, in the, in, in the uh, put us in the census in the early turn of the century. They didn't have a census on black people until all the damn black teachers, preachers, registered all the people. You see what I'm saying? Registered all the people. So they can use these particular, they can use these people, you see what I'm saying? They can use these particular people as a front piece. It's like a damn laundering business. You see what I'm saying? And this is what's going on right now. So the churches is into this. Now, the new shit is this. They came on TV last week. They said that the, the poverty among black people has fallen the lowest it has fallen, the lowest it has been since 1959. Now we know damn well that there ain't no jobs. You had, you had more jobs in 1959 than you have now. You know what I'm saying? You had, you had people that had all kind of positions. You know what I'm saying? Hell, you, it's hard to even work in a damn kitchen now. You know what I'm saying? So now, we know that the jobs is going. We know that with the, with the Reaganomics, it had more homeless people than the country has ever seen. Now, wait a minute now. Let's think of this shit now. This is the way they fooling people. They have produced the greatest homeless that the country has ever seen. And the only reason why you are not reminded of the homeless now is because they done came in and put them motherfuckers in concentration camp and they're making melatonin pills out of them. Okay. So now, if we know there's no jobs, you see, and I, I don't know, I haven't worked on a, on a job, a, a legitimate job since 1989, but I know... Oh, uh, damn near 10 years of college. The last time I just tried to come out and go out and get a bullshit job so I can pay rent. I damn near caught hell. You know what I'm saying? I damn near caught hell. You can, you, like now, it's like every place else. Atlanta didn't used to be this way, but now you can lose a damn job. It might take three months to get a new one. You see what I'm saying? So I damn near caught hell trying to get a bullshit job. You see what I'm saying? So my point is, there are no jobs. But, get, but if there are no jobs, how in the hell can poverty fall the lowest it has been, 29.5%. Uh, How is that? Because now they're saying that basically they're telling you the truth. The people that was in poverty no longer exist. So therefore, the poverty has fallen the lowest it has ever been. Now let's look at the magnitude. We've got to go back and think a minute now. Listen, they came in and say that the poverty has fallen the lowest it has been since, uh, since 1959. Yet, in 1959-1960, you had the unemployment rate was not as big as what the hell it is now. You understand where I'm coming from? Uh, uh, now, one minute they talk about we're spending too much money in welfare, affirmative action, we can't do the health care, and we're running out of money, the country going to be broke, the country, and we already know, the conscious people know the country been broke since the 1950s, right? So now, what they're actually saying that in actuality, that the people in poverty no longer exist. So it's not saying that poverty has fallen. They're saying that the people in poverty has fallen off the planet and became so low now since 1959 have actually died. And these are the, these, these are the way they say things. You see, these are, the, these are the way they say things. You see what I'm saying? So now, look at this. They even bear witness to it in the scriptures. Uh, you see, the Bible, see, you got to trace this thing down, because when you're dealing with the Bible, you're dealing with a very bastardized book. Although we prove that there's wisdom all through it, but it's damn near like connect the dots. It's in fragments. And so we're talking about years and years of people coming in and carving up shit. So what we're going to do is we're going to go deep into the scriptures. So now, the original scriptures of the Bible is the first four gospels of the complete gospels. This is the one coming from, um, this comes from, um, uh, the guy is Robert J. Miller is the editor. And these are the complete gospels. So anytime you get, if you want to deal with the gospels to compare to your Bible, always get the ones that say the New Jerusalem Bible. You will see some of those. Or you can get this book, The Complete Gospels, which is only talking about first four Gospels. Because one of the four, four first four Gospels, which is what? Uh, Mark, Matthew, Mark, John, and Luke. You 
instead of sin. But in here, they're going to add other ones, the book of Q, the gospel of Thomas, the gospel of James, the gospel of the Savior, the gospel of Mary. The go you see what I'm saying? Now, what is this? I'm going to explain this thing to you. So if you want to get the real ones, any time you see that book with that line down the middle of the page, that's not the one you want. That means that they done carved up some shit. The one you want to get is this one, the complete gospels. It's, uh, this one costs, um, you'll find this book in, in, in any of the stores. They're going to have some in here. Uh, but you can find this book in any, any, any of this, uh, um, Pole Bridge Press. But it's The Complete Gospels by Robert J. Miller. Now, uh, there's a section in here to bear witness to all of this that's going on. Now, to read the Bible, we come to find out that 98 percent, all of the damn Bible, is now. Never happened in the past. You see, somebody took some scriptures that was all mystical and prophetic and wrote it, historicalized it. And that's what's fucking up everything. We're going to get deeper into that tonight. Look, this is the part of Matthew that I want to read. And it says this. And the, the disciple, this is in Matthew, Matthew 17. You can get this right out of your Bible. Matthew verse 17, Matthew 17 verse 4 to 25. Matthew 17 verse 4 to 25. This, fortunately, is right in your regular King James Version. And it says this. It says, the disciples quoted him. They, they're quoting Jesus. They say that in the light of this, do, do, they say, do the scholars claim that Elijah must come first? So they're saying that Elijah must come first. That's what the Jewish nation is on hold now. That's why they're all fucked up. They've been looking for Elijah, but they're the fake Jews, so they can't receive the Elijah, but the Elijah came here. That's why they went to Ebony in 1983 and told Ebony, you got to change his name from Elijah to some some willful tool or some kind of shit because they knew that we got the Elijah. Now they said Elijah must come first. And it says, in response, he said that Elijah does indeed come to restore everything. So we're talking about in a period of the 20th century. See what I'm saying? Because he was born 1897. And so he didn't come until 1931 when he got the actual teaching. You see what I'm saying? Now, so some people don't believe this shit. Well, listen, the scriptures say that Elijah must come. In Egypt, they say to who they must come. You see what I'm saying? In, in Hebrewism, it's Enoch, or it's John in Christianity, it's Elijah, it's Enos also that must come. In different cultures, there's supposed to be a forerunner to the Christ that was supposed to come and set, straight, set, set shit straight. So now, whether we say we don't believe that or not, well, hell, if this, if this is going into the year 2000, even when the Christians say that the Christ is coming, and if we are just going to take the Christian script, that means that Elijah had to have come to restore the nation. He had to do it more than now four years. You see what I'm saying? So obviously, we can bear witness that that was the one because it says in all ones that it would, it would be a forerunner. Now, this is what it says. Elijah does come and to restore everything. But I tell you that Elijah has already come. So now, this is the future. Whoever is speaking is speaking right now in the future. And when we say speaking, we're talking about the knowledge that we are receiving now. That's the speech. It's the, it's the book that you're getting because we wrote the books years ago for you to pick up now. You got it? Now it says this, Elijah has already come, and they did not recognize him. Oh, damn, that's true. This person came. We didn't recognize this person as no biblical Elijah. You see what I'm saying? The, 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 the Islamic people recognized him as a, as a heretic based on orthodox. You understand what I'm saying? Um, but remember now, the, the, the Messiah script, the Messiah, the, Messiah, the Messiah text, which is the Jewish Messiah text, that book Raphael Patti said when he comes, he's going to come posing as an Arab, which means Islam, not them the white Arab. They say he's going to come in, the, he's going to, when he comes in the future, he's going to have, he's going to be disguised as an Arab. Now, this is the Hebrew scriptures, which is more authentic than the fake Jewish, the fake Christian stuff. We're going to get into this now. Y'all bear with me. But I want to put this down. Look. And they say, he has already come. So we're talking about, we're talking about somewhere now. Say, so he's already come. Well, when did he come? He came in 1931 to 19, well, he, he, well, he came in 18 something. We'll say that when he came into the knowledge, that's when they talk about. Whenever, you only live when you come into the knowledge of self. You understand? So otherwise, you're just a, a bump on the wall. So he came in 1931. When he came into the knowledge, 1930, 1931 to 1975. So they say he's already come. 
Hell, this is damn near 20 years after he's gone that we're reading this. Say, he's already come. Now look at this. And they did not recognize him. And the sons of Adam are also going to suffer at their hands. They said that when Elijah came, whoever they were did with him as they pleased. 